I have a brilliant idea. Right now, This Is Not Financial Advice is sweeping across social media as the deterrent for authorities to not prosecute influencers for giving financial advice to invest in scamming opportunities. What if you created a Ponzi scheme, made a bunch of money, and then when the authorities started trailing you, you jump out of your car and tell them, it's a prank, I'm an actor, I'm just method acting for my next role. I just needed some first-hand experience. Actor gets 20 years in prison for running $650 million Hollywood Ponzi scheme. Maybe that's what our talented young scammer should have done. Think back to when you were a kid and had to use every sales tactic in the book to raise $20 from your parents' fund. Imagine raising $650 million. This guy is a lock to be a great high-ticket closer guru. Zachary Horwitz, 35, received the harsh punishment after admitting he built clients by faking deals with Netflix and HBO in a six-year scam. I lost my way, he said. That's an understatement. One person's decisions have wrecked so many families, including his own. No one wins in scams or Ponzi scams. Schemes. Zach raised money in amounts between $35,000 and $1.5 million. Zach is the kind of guy who would have made a killing in MLMs. He could have promised crazy returns with a Forex auto trading bot and had the benefit of promoting a scheme without getting in trouble. Each promissory note provided for a specific amount to be paid at maturity, which typically equated to a profit of between 35 and 45% over the life of the note. I'm glad he didn't send me an email asking for an investment because I would have signed up right away. If the returns of your investment match Steph Curry's shooting percentage, then you're gonna get rich very quickly. The scheme was Zach's company, One in MM, would use the money raised to finance transactions to acquire distribution rights in a specific movie, license those rights to a specific media company, and use the profits to satisfy the note. With the rise in popularity of streaming services, and it was reasonably new, I'm not that surprised a Ponzi scheme like this existed. It does make sense that someone in Hollywood could start a company aimed at raising money to help fund movies to then sell to the streaming services. Here's a chart representing some of the deals Zach claimed to be involved with. These are real movies and the numbers look reasonable. The return is high, but that's not unreasonable given the risky nature of the investment. I don't know this business, but I imagine there's plenty of times where a deal like this falls through and you're left holding the rights to a movie that isn't being purchased. One in MM Productions raises $5 million in funds for genre films. Julio and Diego Halavis and Zach make up One in MM Productions. The Halavis brothers have numerous directing credits to their name. One in MM Capital is the other defendant in this Ponzi scheme, and it sounds like Zach was in charge of raising the funds in that entity while One in MM Productions had nothing to do with the scheme. Horwitz relied on personal relationships and word of mouth referrals to obtain investors. You have to be a ruthless sociopath to raise money from people knowing they're investing in a Ponzi scheme all for your personal gain. Horowitz raised money from five principal investors, most of whom raised funds from friends, family, and other downstream investors for the purpose of investing in the promissory notes. Whenever you watch a great movie or eat an awesome slice of pizza, you're going to tell friends that they need to experience it too. Making money is even more powerful. If you found an investment scheme that paid out 45% in the first year, you're definitely going to be telling friends. Horowitz's five principal investors raised funds from more than 200 downstream investors, some of whom raised funds from further downstream investors to finance purchases of promissory notes. It sounded like everyone wanted to join the party. Selling high return investment schemes is easy and it's why fake guru courses and MLM spread like wildfire. Horwitz told investors he had experience and relationships in the media content distribution industry, that he and one in MM had existing business relationships with HBO and Netflix, and that he could use his experience and connections to acquire and sell distribution rights in movies to Netflix and HBO for a profit. With a lot of the schemes I cover in the marketing used by fake gurus, a common comment is, how do people fall for this? A major reason why I wanted to make this video is because we are all vulnerable to a slick talking con man, even smart investors with millions of dollars. Horowitz represented that investments in the promissory notes were safe because Netflix and HBO were established media companies that had an urgent need for new content, were willing to pay Horowitz a premium to license the rights he acquired, and had the financial ability to pay for those rights. Here's the chart for Netflix stock over its lifetime. Let's put ourselves in the investor's shoes. Zach B began promoting this opportunity in 2014 when the Netflix stock was trading for around $49 per share. By the time he stopped raising money, the stock was trading for around $360 a share. A reasonable mind would assume that they were having growing pains and needed to begin overpaying for content to feed the demand of new customers. This is the 2015 yearly SEC filing for Netflix where they mentioned the company had $9.5 billion of obligations towards streaming content. What's really interesting about reading the report is a reminder that it wasn't that long ago that Netflix was a DVD rental service. 
In this cash flow statement, we can see that Netflix spent $3.8 billion on additions to their streaming content library as opposed to $75 million on their DVD content library. I show that because at that time, it probably was reasonable to think that someone could find movies and license it to Netflix and HBO for a profit. In 2017, Zach met personally with another investor representing that he'd use the investor's funds to acquire the rights to specific movie titles and license those rights to HBO. That investor invested in 108 movies with corresponding promissory notes. Zach still owes this investor $8.7 million. If you think you've had awkward conversations, imagine having to tell someone you took their $8.7 million and aren't giving it back. You're probably wondering how this guy convinced wealthy investors to give him money. To support his false representations, Horowitz sent documents to investors that purported to evidence his business dealings with HBO and Netflix, including distribution agreements that appeared to reflect agreements by Netflix and HBO to license rights from 1&MM in the specific movie titles for which investors had purchased the promissory notes. If you're raising hundreds of millions of dollars, you might as well throw fraud into your business this model, once the Ponzi starts gaining momentum, you have to keep it going at any cost. Over time, one in MM's investors were also deceived by Horowitz's consistent track record of paying large profits supposedly generated by his deals with Netflix and HBO. There are so many Ponzi schemes and scams on social media, and people will say that it can't be a scam or Ponzi because people are making money. This is the biggest fallacy with those stupid opportunities. In order to keep the fun going, Zach had to pay out the early investors, and when they got paid out with a healthy profit, they put money back in. Like an investor, investment vending machine that spits out two products instead of one. Of course you're putting your money back in to earn more. In late 2019, Horowitz began defaulting on outstanding notes issued by 1&MM, leaving investors with more than $234 million in unreturned principal. I think what happened is he raised over $200 million in cash, but the complaint claims $690 million because some of the early money rolled into future investments, but it wasn't new money entering into the scheme. Horowitz completed the purchase of his residence by transferring over $5.6 million to the escrow company in March 28, 2018. I wonder if any red flags were raised that an actor in small movies that no one knew was purchasing a $5.6 million house with cash money. This is the business listing for one in MM Capital, Zach's company that is also a defendant in the complaint. The address is listed as 9615 Bolton Road in LA. In the complaint, it states that one in MM's principal place of business is Horwitz home in Los Angeles. Using batch leads, I found the property to verify ownership records. I'm blacking out the names for privacy reasons, but the previous sale was in February 2018, and the name Leslie Klinger appears multiple times. This document shows Leslie Klinger's name for resigning agent for service of process for 1&MM Capital LLC. I don't know what this means, but it seems odd that Zach's name didn't show up as the owner. Maybe he didn't actually own the property, or was trying to buy it through someone else to avoid having to give up the property when the Ponzi he created inevitably collapsed. Now time to see his personal expenses. In 2016 to 2017, Horowitz spent 125 grand on trips to Las Vegas, 1.8 million in payments to his American Express, 700,000 to a celebrity interior decorator, 165 grand on high-end automobiles, 137 grand on charter jet flights, and 55,000 for a luxury watch subscription service. Some of my most popular videos are why athletes go broke. For almost all of us, we've never had the opportunity of spending a million dollars in a single year, but once you see the reality of someone living this lifestyle, you realize how quickly millions can be spent. According to an FBI affidavit, Horowitz spent more than $6.9 million on American Express credit card bills, more than $345,000 on charter planes, and more than $604,000 on Mercedes-Benz and Audi vehicles. To put in perspective how much money he was spending, remember it's money from his investors. Spending $8 million is equivalent to someone spending $80,000 a year for 100 years, and he did it in only a couple years. Defendant ran the largest known Ponzi scheme in the history of this district. U.S. attorneys based out of Los Angeles wrote in a recent filing. I hope this story turns into a movie. Zachary Quinto can definitely play Horwitz, even better if it's an Aaron Sorkin script. I'll raise funds to license the rights to Netflix, too. Three victims addressed the court in person Monday, including Robert Henney, a screenwriter who said he lost $1.8 million in the Ponzi scheme that he described as devastating and an unending nightmare. What would make the movie more engaging would be focusing on making a few of the victims the focus of the story as you interweave their lives with the result. Once you hear victims talk about losing their entire investment because of a Ponzi, you'll realize how devastating it is. Yet another unidentified victim, 64, described losing $1.4 million in the scam. I have had to return to work to afford food and shelter. I will never be able to earn that amount of money back by working. Part of that money was an inheritance from my mother's passing. I am emotionally distraught. 
Horowitz spoofed emails from HBO and Netflix to his investors as he began to default. He raised money based on lies. He continued raising money knowing it was a Ponzi to pay for his enhanced lifestyle and left hundreds of people in financial turmoil. The story of every Ponzi scheme. To end on a positive note, we're all alive and if any of us have lost money in an investment or got scammed before, we have a second chance to bounce back and better ourselves. Unlike Zach, who will spend the next 20 years in prison second guessing his decisions, and he'll leave prison owing $230 million to people who trusted him. No one wins with Ponzi schemes. Thanks for watching.